It was a sort of a rattle that I heard a mechanical clink and I'm in for a very unpleasant surprise. Hi and welcome to On Two Wheels. So today's video is going to be a slightly different one. I'm going to tell you a story. A story of how I blew up a DRZ engine. As enthusiasts, most of us like to maintain our own bikes. And as soon as something goes wrong, the first instinct is to fix it ourselves. I'd like to think that I know what I can do and what I can't do. And in this story, it was a repair that I couldn't do myself. But I ended up having to do it by myself. There are some parts that I'm very proud of. But at the same time, there are some parts that I'm very embarrassed of or ashamed of. So anyone who's had a DRZ or been on a DRZ group knows that uh, we always get those questions about ticking sounds. Everyone asks, hey, my bike's got a ticking sound. Is this normal? Sometime in October last year, mine developed a slight slapping sound. And this was beyond the click and it was quite noticeable. And uh, at this point, I figured it's the timing chain. It was a sort of a rattle that came from within the engine case itself. And um, I pretty much figured it's something to do with the cam chain. So when I took out the cam chain tension, it was fully extended. So pretty much my chain was on its way out and it was slapping around with too much slack. And at a previous valve clearance check, um, a mechanic had told me that my valves might need to be replaced sometime in the future. So I figured if I'm taking things apart, I might as well do the valves as well. So now I knew I had a big repair that I needed to do sometime in the future. And the Christmas break seemed like the most logical point because I wouldn't be riding the bike to work. And uh, sometime in November, I was in Singapore on holiday and I figured, let me just go check out some bike shops. And while I was at one of these shops, which happened to be a Suzuki dealership, parts happened to be a lot cheaper than it was in Australia. And since I knew what I wanted, I figured I'll just buy the parts there. This was Suzuki OEM parts and the part numbers match. So where could it go wrong, right? So I bought the valve, cam chain tensioner, the gaskets, uh, the cam chain and the head gasket. I had another month before Christmas break. So I figured I'll do a few rides. And at that point I had planned to go on the ride that Suzuki Australia had organized. It was a ride to Likula, a two day ride. And I was really looking forward to this. So the chain slap had been around for about two, three months. So I didn't think it was that big a deal. So I went on the ride. We did about five, 600 kilometers. And this was an amazing ride. Uh, we started off from Yarra Junction, went through Warburton, Marysville, Woods Point, and then to Likula, stayed overnight. The following day, rode to Walhalla, then through Bobo, came back to Yarra Junction. The bike was riding okay, but at some point I could feel the engine kind of strain a little bit. It wasn't too bad and it wasn't abnormal. At that point, I just figured it's probably because of the low air pressure I'd been running all weekend. So we finished the ride, came back to Yara Junction, everyone said their goodbyes and I started to head back home. Just before hitting Lilydale, I heard a mechanical clink. The engine cut out and I pulled the clutch in. That was a bit scary because that's not the kind of sound you're used to hearing from the engine. So I thought for a while, pressed the start button briefly and the engine fired right back up. Everything seemed fine and I was back on the road. And about two kilometers down the road, I feel the engine kind of struggled a bit. And again, the exact same thing happens. I hear a little metal clink and the bike stops. So I'm trying to crank the engine, but it just isn't starting up. I can hear it turn. There's just no compression building and it just won't fire up. Well, it's definitely broken and there's no way it's going to start up and I need to get home and I won't be able to ride this bike. So what do I do? So lucky for me, I was actually ahead of the organizers who were still in Yara Junction. So I called them up and asked them if I could get a ride back home. These guys were really well organized. They had a support van, a trailer and everything for the whole ride. So Suzuki Australia being the nice guys that they are, gave me a ride home. So put my bike on the trailer, came back home. I parked the bike. That was all the riding I was going to do for quite a while. So then I waited for Christmas break and started on the project. Now, I had never replaced a timing chain or a head gasket on a bike by myself. And this felt like a project that I probably didn't want to take on myself. So I figured I'll go to a mechanic and get this done. So I called my local mechanic and I'm in for a very unpleasant surprise. So they tell me that they can't do this repair because I didn't buy the parts from them and hence they can't give a warranty on the repair. I told them, look, these are OEM parts, comes in the Suzuki wrapping exact same parts the parts are definitely the correct part but they said no if they do this repair with outside parts they don't get to sell parts hence they won't take the job now that was quite a pickle i was in and then i figured okay i guess i'll be doing this repair by myself 
So now it was time for me to start the repair. I wasn't sure what exactly happened. And because the last sound that I heard from the engine was a very metallic clink, I figured it was something to do with the valves. I uh, started by draining out the oil. And at this point, the oil had a very fine glitter to it. A metallic glitter. That's something you shouldn't be seeing in your oil. Metal and plastic filing should not be there. So then I take the uh, tank off, then, I, then the valve cover off. I see the valves and everything kind of looks okay. One thing that was going through my mind was that the timing chain broke. But the chain was still there and it was pretty much intact. So what can I do next? I open up the engine case on the right hand side. So when I take this off, that's when it really hit me. I see little metal filings and plastic filings all over the engine case. Where did this come from? So I'm looking for maybe a cog or a gear that's broken or like started to file off. There's absolutely nothing. So I'll continue with the project and see how it goes. So at this point, I've now taken the valve cover off and the cams off and I need to take the cam chain off. So from tutorials I've seen online, I know that you need to let the chain drop to the bottom and take it out from the crankcase. So with a little bit of fiddling around, I was able to take the old chain out. So if you're familiar with the DRZ cam chain, each can link actually has four metal plates or three metal plates between individual pins. And in my case, a single plate in the middle of this chain had broken and it was literally sticking out like a shark's fin. And this one link that was broken was pretty much rubbing up against the entire inside of the engine and scratching it up. So there's essentially a groove cut into the cylinder, the head, the valve cover and all those metal filings that I saw, that's where it came from. And the plastic filings, well, that came from the chain guide, which was also cut into. So I figured, okay, what's done is done. I'm gonna be replacing these parts anyway. So I give it a thorough cleaning, use all the brake clean and decrease I can to make sure I get as much of it off as possible and uh, clean the crankcase. So at the same time, I also plan to change my valve. Taking the valves off the head was a bit of a delicate job, something I, was a bit too afraid to do because it essentially requires hammering the valves out of its springs. So I got some professional help, went to my mechanic friend and he helped me take the valves out. So when I did take the valves out, I noticed that the two exhaust valves were bent. So the little clink that I heard was actually the two exhaust valves making contact with the piston. So now I've got the old valves out. I need to put the valves in. So as I clean out all the excess metal filings and things and prepared to put the ca camshafts back in. I noticed that one of the camshafts was actually scratched in. So there's a little groove that had cut in on the camshaft as well as the head. So it doesn't take a detective to figure it out. It probably was because of the metal filings that was turning or spinning around in that engine. So at this point, I try my luck. I figured, look, let me sand, down, sand it down, try to get it as smooth as possible and see if it works. If not, I'm gonna have to go with a new head and new cams. That's a worst case scenario, and I'm just hoping that I don't have to go through it. So I go back and continue to put the valves in. And now I need to check valve clearance. So having done valve clearance before, I was familiar with it, and I set the valve clearance, and that was all set. I'm pretty confident that I've cleaned out all the metal filings out, and I now wrap up everything on the crankcase, and it's time to put everything back together. So at this point, since the engine was out, I thought there was something else I could do. So if you've ever cleaned the carburetor on the DRZ400, one of the most difficult parts of that whole project is getting the carb out because it sits in a very tight spot between the airbox and the engine. So now that my engine was off, it was a lot easier to take the carb out. So I figured I'll take out the carburetor, clean that as well, and slap everything back on. So now I got a newly serviced carburetor. My engine is all back, cam chain is new, new tension is on, and it's ready to start. So now I'm at one of those really intense moments where I've done a lot of work I've never even attempted before, and I haven't even, I don't even know what I, if I did it right, and I want to make sure that the engine actually fires up. So I press the start button, and three cranks later, the engine starts. Boy, was I lucky. At this point, I let the engine idle for a few minutes. I'm thrilled that it starts. It holds a proper idle. There's no more metal slapping and everything's just right. It's just amazing. I was really proud of what I, I was really proud of what I just did and everything seemed just good. After about 10 minutes of idling the engine, so I decided to do a quick test ride around the neighborhood. I get on my bike and do a test ride hitting maybe 20, 30, 40 kilometers at most. And I come back, bike still okay. Nothing more needs to be done. But then I figured, let me just test it on the freeway as well. So the freeway is about two kilometers from home. I get onto the freeway and I give it a decent amount of throttle. So I touch hundred kilometers an hour and the bike's running really well. 
and I felt it slightly choke. It felt like I had just stepped on the brake and I just took the next exit, did a loop around, I stopped at the traffic light and the engine dies. I tried cranking it over and over again, it just doesn't fire up. And at this point, I've given up again. I have no idea what's going wrong. So I call a friend who's in that neighborhood and he gives me a ride home. So I go home, fit the bike carry on my SUV and go back to pick up, pick up my bike. So now I've come home, I try to crank it again. First I thought it was the carburetor because it felt the engine felt like it was turning well enough. So I take out the carb again, make sure everything's okay. Carb back goes back in. There is spark. The only other thing I could think of is the timing going off. So I check the timing. It's still perfect. And uh, next thing is to, well, take off the valve. So at this point I take the cams off. And when I start to take the cams off, I look at them and one cam is severely discolored. So that means it's gone through so much heat and it's got those purple blue rainbow lines and that's a bad sign. So when I look, take the car cam out, I notice that so the cam has actually dug into the head and the valve cap and it's just ruined the head. It's just not usable anymore. So at this point, I just need a new head. That's not a cheap repair. And I figured the easiest thing is to buy a head, if not, maybe a whole engine. So I get back on Gumtree, Facebook, try to find an engine. At this point, I see a 2009 DRZ 400, which hadn't been used in a while, but needed a fair bit of work to get back on the road. But it was going cheap and the engine ran. So the cheap thing I wanted was the engine. So I figured I'll buy that bike and use the engine off that and sell off the rest. So I went to take a look at the bike. It had clearly not been ridden in a while. Uh, just taken out and serviced for the sale and uh, it came with a lot of accessories and it just made sense to buy that bike. Having come back home, I kind of realized that that bike was in much better condition than mine was. So I've got two bikes, both needing some sort of work and it turns out that the newer bike needed less work than my older bike. So I ended up taking parts of my old bike onto the new one and using that. How I got that bike running is a different story. So I'll get back to that on another in another video. So now I've got a DRZ with a blown engine and which is not economically viable to fix. And just like what everyone says when something goes wrong with their bikes, part it out. Well, that's what I did. I decided to advertise the bike, set off more circuit parts and within 10 days, pretty much 90% of that bike was gone. So I kept some of the more important parts like the safari tank and the CDI, the starter motor because, well, those are things I could use in the future. And the rest of the bike was literally gone. So what did I learn from all this? The next time I hear some odd noise, I'm not going to delay it. I'm just going to do it and fix it. And I hope you enjoyed that story and learned something from my mistakes. If you did, please give it a like and feel free to go to the comment section and tell me how silly I was in not taking care of this repair when I should have. And also click the subscribe button to hear such motorcycle misadventures. Thank you for watching on two wheels.